Happy New Year everybody, Uncle Dagger here, and today I'm going to be talking about the Dark Zero Microcoil Jig. But first, if you notice here, I have a new background, I have some nice lighting, and this lighting really does help with the close-up shots. You're going to see that a little bit later in the video, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, wish everybody a safe and profitable and happy 2014, but uh, this is the Dark Zero Microcoil Jig. Now I obtained this through an ECF member named Dark Zero, and basically this allows you to use a fixture to make your micro coils. You take one end of the wire and you fasten it underneath this screw here, and then you take the other length of the other end of the wire and hold it, and you rotate this, and it makes a very nice tight coil. Now one of the things this achieves is it keeps you from twisting the wire as you're wrapping it. And anybody who's used micro coils knows that uh, when you twist the wire a lot as you're wrapping, it tends to distort and you end up with a lopsided looking coil or one end that just won't fuse with the others when it's torched. So we're going to talk about how this works next. Okay, so let's take a look at this Dark Zero micro coil jig. Very simple construction. As you can see here, um, it, there is a pin or mandrel, as it's called, that's retained here with a set screw. Simply take a small Allen wrench, loosen that screw, and then you're able to slide the pin out or adjust it. Now, when I build my micro coils, I actually torch it right on this pin. Because again, this is aluminum and stainless steel construction, so it's plenty sturdy for that. And that gives me a nice platform that keeps all my coils tight. Now, let me show you this. These are some of the spare pins. I ordered five spare pins with mine, and there was a small additional cost. Uh, you can see that one is actually a 1.2 millimeter. I have the 2 millimeter in here. And I'm using that size for a reason. We're going to talk about alternate coiling or alternate wicking methods rather in the next video here. And I will post that link on my YouTube channel once that video is completed. So we're going to build a coil with this, but we're not going to actually wick it. That is in part two. Uses a Phillips screw to retain the wire. Again, pretty straightforward there. As you can see, this area here is offset, so you can keep your wire straight and wrap. And we'll talk about how that gets wrapped next here. Let me grab a length of wire. I'm going to use a 26 gauge. That's one of my favorite types of wire to use for DNA devices and also for mechanicals because you can get a nice uh, number of wraps. I usually do nine wraps, uh, nine or ten wraps. Comes out to about uh, about 0.9 ohms, one ohm, perfect for DNA devices. I actually like working with a thicker wire, and this is traditionally what I would do. I would take it, I would hold it with one of my thumbs, and I would begin my wraps right around this blunt tip needle. But um, it's a little bit more difficult using this method than using the Dark Zero coiler simply because it's it's hard to get a, a consistent micro coil. I'm sure there's plenty of you that will disagree with me, but I found that this is just a really easy way to do it. So I'm simply going to take one end of the wire and I'm going to loop it. And I like to actually make sure my wire is going clockwise so that it tightens. So I'm going to begin it here. I'm going to hold this, and I'm going to wrap it around the screw, and then I'm going to tighten it up real nice. Okay, nice and tight. I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to grab my other end of the wire here, and I am simply going to begin turning what I'm holding in my hand here, the microcoil jig. And I'm making sure that each coil is touching the next as I go around. And what you'll notice here, again, I'm working a lot closer to it normally, but um, 
and I'm also left-handed so this is a little bit of a challenge so I'm going to reverse this I'm going to grab this with my other hand what you'll notice here is that uh, you're getting a nice tight wrap that's pretty much staying in line for this entire micro coil it should have been counting oh well we'll see what it comes out to here And actually, I am going to grab this with a pair of hemostats. Just so I have a good grip on it for when I'm torching. And that should be good. So as you can see, all the wraps are nice and close here. Let me adjust my focus. It really makes this a very simple process to get nice consistent coils. You can see that. Okay. So basically the next step is torching. I'm going to leave this on the micro coil jig. We've got enough pressure on this that all our coils are pushed together. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a shove. And I'm going to look at this closer. Everything looks pretty good. Alright, and now we're going to torch it. A nice even glow there, that's pretty good. So now you have two choices. What I've been doing lately, because I want to keep all my wraps close, is I've been waiting for this to cool and running this screw out and then simply uh, sliding the Oh, my hemostat is still attached. Let me see if I can get that off. There we go. Simply sliding this pin right out of this block. Pull my pin out. I'm going to let that cool off a little bit. So now we have our micro coil. It is fused together. And I'm going to show you a close up shot one more time because I'm just so impressed with how well this thing works for micro coils. You see that? Got one that's standing a little bit proud there on the far end, but by and large, that looks pretty doggone good. Nice and even. So now we're going to get a dripper. I'm going to leave that in there again until I fasten this. And I'm simply going to take my micro coil here and I'm going to snip the ends a little bit. Okay. So I have one leg cut longer than the other by design because that makes it a lot easier to uh, line these up and get them in. All right. Again, pretty simple, straightforward. Looks pretty good. Take these screws and tighten them down. Now this is one of the nice things about the fact that that pin is easily removable is you can keep the pin in there and it works just like the traditional drill bit to keep your coil in position. But it looks very nice and I'm simply going to spin this out. And trim the ends. A lot of people like to spin the ends of the wires, but I've actually screwed up some coils doing that, so I usually just trim them up with the flush cutters. Very nice. And two millimeter, as you can see, everything's lined up perfectly there. No malformed coils. And let's go ahead and test it and see what it meters out at. Now half the time when I try my little handy dandy ohm meter that at one time was near impossible to get a hold of, it will not display a readout for me. So we'll see, we'll see if it works. Point 0.9, look at that, right on the nose. Or does it say point 0.89? Yeah, it actually says point 0.89. Apparently I can't read properly. But that's close. 
that's close to 0.9 which is what we were shooting for. Let's go ahead and drop it on the DNA 20 box and see what the DNA 20 reads because sometimes I've noticed a little bit of a discrepancy between the two. Again 0.9 fire it up give her a little test fire here everything's looking pretty good and that was it for the first video uh, the continuation part two of this we're going to discuss some alternate wicking methods obviously uh, we've talked lately about people who may have cotton allergies and um, possibly need to go back to silica but they love microcoils and we're going to talk about this little thing here and yes that is what we're going to use to get our silica wick into our microcoil see you in a few